Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you how to parse on Mythic, High Tinker, Mecha Torque, and Unholy DK. Now, outside of Opulence, if there's one other fight where you should not care about your rank at all because it does not reflect your performance, it is this fight. And that is because parsing on this fight is completely RNG. Prior to getting this footage, my highest rank on this fight was I believe an 80th percentile, and that's through like you know, farming this boss every single week since it came out. And the RNG behind this fight is the following. You have to not get a single bomb, because if you do, you're not going to get a high rank. You cannot get shrunk at all, because if you do, you will not get a high rank. And you should not be doing grips. Um, grips don't affect your rank that much as long as you only have to grip in the last phase. If you have to grip in the first phase as well, that will affect it. And now obviously the more of those things happen, the lower your rank will be. So on progress, when I first watched my footage of our first kill, I got, I think, three bombs and two shrinks. And I also did two grips in the first phase and then all the grips in the last phase. So you can see how getting lucky versus getting unlucky with debuffs in th this fight can make a huge difference. And that will reflect in your rank, however, that does not reflect your performance. So just keep that in mind before we get started. Now, as far as talent build goes, I use default unholy build with Pestilence. This is one of the few fights where you can use Pestilence and it feels fairly okay to use because the boss doesn't move. The only time the boss moves is when he casts Blast off. And you can see that on the DBM timer, so you know exactly when the boss will move um, and you just don't drop your death and decay at that point. Now, as far as cooldown usage goes, uh, I use everything except for army on pull. I want to save that army for the second phase where we bloodlust, uh, just so those two sync up uh, with my second potion, because that's where I will get the most damage out of it. I assume that towards the end of the tier, when everyone is just, you know, high geared, and you're just doing insane damage, you will start to lust the first phase if you're trying to go for speed kills or for, um, you know, parses. So in that case, you will be using the army on pull. Now, we're still at the point where we bloodlust the second phase just to play it safe. Uh, so I will be holding army for that phase. A few tips that I can give you is first of all, whenever the wormhole generator happens, you want to cast Death's Advance right before it goes off uh, or a few seconds before it goes off because this will prevent the knockup from happening. On progress, I didn't know this, and I would always have to ask for a slow fall from a mage um, or a life grip. But if you death's advance, the way it lines up, you can death's advance every single wormhole generator, except for the one in the intermission phase. So for the one in the intermission phase, I suggest just having some avalanche pots in your bag, uh, because there, if you do get knocked up, you can just avalanche pot and you will not die since the boss is not casting blast off at the same time. Um, and that way, your Death's Advance will be up for every single Wormhole Generator in the regular phases. This does mean that you cannot cast Death's Advance if you do get bombs, um, because that will just, you know, uh, kind of push the timings to where it, it won't be up. I believe there might be one spot where you can cast it, but I would suggest just not using Death's Advance at all, unless you're using it to prevent that knockoff from the Wormhole Generator. I also run Spell Eater on this fight, and um, that talent is particularly useful because it does allow you to drop a bomb on a pre-existing puddle to save room. I only recommend doing this if you're very comfortable with the movement, and if you, or if you don't have room. So the way you do this with Spell Eater, obviously you, it absorbs more damage. You run out to the spot where you need to drop your bomb, you pop your AMS when there's about 2 or 3 seconds left on your debuff, and then you run through the pre-existing puddle as you drop your bomb. So you don't want to run in, stop, drop your bomb, then run out of the puddle, because that will consume your AMS and you will get a dot. What you want to do is just do a drive-by and just drop your dot off as you run. And with Spell Eater, you will be able to drop your dot, not get the debuff from the dot, and obviously not get the debuff from the puddle. So that is very useful. You can also do this without Spell Eater, but it is a lot less safe. So I definitely recommend using Spell Eater for that. Now, my third set of cooldowns here um, comes up and I use it right as we're pushing the boss. 
So I don't get maximum benefit out of this set. And one thing I do want to mention is that you should always wait for a blast off and then use your cooldowns. Because if you use your Unholy Frenzy, for example, and then the boss just jumps away, then you're wasting usually about four seconds of Unholy Frenzy, which, you know, could mean three wounds on the target. So that is a pre pretty big deal. Definitely always wait to cast Unholy Frenzy until the boss jumps. Same with Death and Decay. If you're running Pestilence, you want to wait for the boss to do Blast Off, run back to his spot, then drop Death and Decay. Um, or if there's more than about six seconds left on the timer, then you can also just drop it um, as the boss is, is like about to jump. So what you saw there is I got the bomb, but it's the intermission phase, so it won't affect my DPS. I also got hit by one of the fires, but I'm running Spell Eater, so it doesn't matter. I, with Spell Eater, you can AMS, it will prevent the fire uh, dot, and it will also prevent the dot from the bomb. So that just makes it a lot safer to drop bombs on that tricky one where the fire comes out right as you drop the bomb. So like I said, for this phase here, I army, uh, I treat it basically like the pull. I army, I use my, my potion, I use all of my cooldowns. Now here, I will actually pause the footage. That big red number in the center of my screen is when the next robot is coming. If you use all of your cooldowns the second the boss comes down, then you, will, you can get a full set of cooldown in before you have to run out and grip. Now, ideally, you run double blood decay and you don't even have to grip at all. But since we are only running one blood decay and myself as a DPS decay, I do have to grip. So that means that I want to get those cooldowns in before the bot comes down. Because after that, if I pop my cooldowns right after I go out and do the grip, that will kind of push my cooldowns to a very awkward timing that I don't want to have to deal with in this phase. So you can see that I'm actually still on the boss. And luckily, the second bot spawned in range. So I didn't even have to grip it. Typically what I would do is let the bot drop and it will either drop in melee or in the range pile. And what I do there is I stun it and I continue to DPS the boss. And right as my cooldowns wear off, I run out and I grip out the bot as the stun wears off. So, you know, I'm kind of delaying gripping it a little bit, but it's safe. It's not causing any issues because it is stunned. Then for the rest of the phase, you basically just want to hit the boss. Um, again, that's advanced to prevent those knockups and AMS if you get bombs. And as you saw from this video, um, I think I mentioned it, but this ended up being a rank two by, I don't think I played it too insane. I made some minor mistakes um, as far as my rotation and cooldown usage went, but it was still a rank two purely because of the reason that I didn't get shrunk a single time and I didn't get a single bomb except for the intermission. So if you're worried about the, your ranking on this fight, don't be, because it does not reflect your actual performance at all. Our kill time actually ended up being very, very good for me. As you can see, my last set of cooldowns is coming up right here. I let my Fester Might drop off. I do this grip. Actually, yep, I do the grip, wait for the blast off, then pop my cooldowns. So here, I have perfect uptime on the boss. I don't have to chase him anywhere. Um, you know, I, I don't lose uptime. I don't have to do grips. I don't have to deal with debuffs. I just pop my cooldowns. Even though the boss was pretty close to dying, my cooldowns still fit in that window. So this ended up being a very, very good kill time for me. Um, and I was off of rank one by actually about almost a thousand DPS. So the person who has rank one on this fight, actually insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, guys, on this fight, there's not that much to talk about. The, the best tips I could give you are for progress and they will not be for parsing. For parsing, this fight is purely RNG and I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully, uh, you know, you don't get any bombs and you don't get shrunk. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions about this fight in particular or on Holy DK in general, then make sure to leave them in the comment section. And if you wanna check out my guide, I have my written and video guides updated for both Frost and Unholy. And now that I have uh, rank one on every fight except for Rastakhan, I believe, I will start doing some Frost fights and maybe upload some Frost footage. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.